Welcome to the next Fit Doc Podcast. And the topic today is being a power couple and secrets to a long-term relationship. So I'm very excited to have my wife, partner in crime, together with me. And we do things a little bit different today. I have a good friend of mine, and his name is Lance Schilling, and he's going to be helping me just kind of go over the questions and, um, you know, try to give some tips to um, those people out there in relationships and hoping to have a long-term relationship. So let's get this started. I'm going to hand it over to you, Lance. Let's go, buddy. I, I felt like the real reason you had me on here is because I am single, and maybe you're trying to give me some, like, I thought almost this was like the nudge of like, hey, Lance, you need to know some of these things. Right, so, right. Uh, definitely hope I can learn from you guys. You know, it's funny, like the first time that I met you guys both. That was a long time ago, man. We've been talking production has been going on since what, seven, eight years now. And you and uh, Chase together with me and, you know, we did the, the confidence journey together and then it kind of started it off and then we did bodybuilding shows and we, you know, Corey was competing. I was competing at the time. You saw us through the pretty much the whole whole thing. Yeah, but what's funny about it is um, in the beginning of all that, I don't know if you know this. I don't think I've probably ever told you, but I literally didn't think you liked me for probably the first year and a half. <laughs> I swear to God, the first year and a half, I thought you didn't like me at all. And it was just that, like, we were able to do good business together. And which is, like, really at the end of the day, with a business relationship, what matters, mm -hmm. right? And, I mean, I guess that's a good segue in is, like, what matters in a relationship is, like, there are certain aspects that you need. And I know that like with you and I, there was a specific moment that I could pinpoint where I knew I gained your trust. You know, I knew I gained your trust. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, maybe that's for a different episode because that's kind of a funny story. Okay. <laughs> but I guess, you know, me being a single guy now, there's certain things that I feel like this, like these days that you just don't like you, that are really difficult for people to understand. And... I guess the number one thing would be, you know, starting off with just trust. You know, I had talked to you a little bit before this about certain things that you feel are really important in a relationship, and both of y'all trust. When would you say was the first time that you knew that you trusted him to be like your husband and to be somebody that you could completely just give yourself to? I would say, I mean, it was really early in our relationship, actually, because Knowing the family that Roland grew up in, I could see that he was surrounded by good examples and um, was raised well. And I saw that even from our first date, um, how he was raised and how he had respect for me. And um, even early in our relationship, um, he had been coming out of a longer term relationship before he and I met and he told me that he felt like he still had feelings for that girl and he didn't want to be that's not a good first date <laughs> line by the way that it wasn't the first date it wasn't the first date, yeah, it, wasn't the first date. it was a couple months in yeah. but and just um, for reference people who don't know y'all were how old at the, uh, the first date uh, high school I was 17 and you were I think 19, I 19. right came out of high school. jailbait <laughs> 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 no but I was shortly there after turning 18 but anyway um I mean I felt like that kind of honesty even that early in you know if you can call it a relationship at that point um was was it was really admirable um because you I feel like that's something you wouldn't necessarily get from a teenage boy really you know because a lot of times they have ulterior motives um and so uh, I told him I was like okay that's nice like I don't care <laughs> like you can't break that's, up with me that's pretty much exactly what she said <laughs> like I felt bad I felt like man I, I still kind of think I have some feelings I couldn't get over it and and I was in my room actually we were talking and then I just I had to just tell you I just had to tell her and she's like okay that's nice I don't care I'm like already then <laughs> what did that do for you like when she said that that had like because that could go one of two ways. Like, how did that feel whenever you knew that, like, she was understanding or what? Um, she just, I could tell she was committed to me, right? And uh, that was, that was to me, very powerful. You know, I, I was, you know, I was, I was raised differently than her. Her, you know, she was, had a different situation, right? She had a, you know, separate two families, right? Mom. Divorced, yeah. They were divorced. And I, I was raised by, you know, Basically, like, my mom and dad were basically like my wife and I are with my, get my girls. It's my dad just did, just adored my mom. Like, absolutely did anything for her. 
I put her on her pedestal, like made sure she was comfortable, made sure that everything was taken care of. Um, and that's just kind of how I was raised. Like she was the queen of the house, uh, but he was the king of the house. And it was this mutual respect amongst them. And I never saw them fight, never saw them fight ever. It was always done behind closed doors. You know, after the fact, we, you know, we talked to conversation as adults. It was always after the fact that my mom told me like, yeah, we would have, we would have discussions, but you boys were never involved. You'll never see that. We didn't want to fight in front of y'all. Um, but the level of respect and love that I saw from my dad to my mom, I saw that as normal. Like, People th see Corey and I do stuff, like I do stuff for Corey, like braid her hair and do stuff like that. That's like normal, that's like normal to me. Because his dad used to paint his mom's toenails. Yeah, to paint but you know so what, sweet. Like it was just like these little things, right? It's just, it's signs of love, <laughs> right? Um, but it was a partnership. I, I, re I saw that when I grew up. That was, to me, normal. And so my dad had the ultimate, ultimate respect and he, my mom, poor my mom, my mom trusted him. Um, my dad was, you know, good looking guy, you know, but kind of the same thing for us now. Right. And, um, I just respected Corey, right. And like my dad respected my mom and I wanted to just let her know I have these, I think I still have some feelings and, and she's like, yeah, I don't care. Like, okay. Cause I was, I was really, you know, attracted to him yeah. and was like, well, yeah, right, so make it work. You, what was the first, like when you say you're really attracted to him, right. like what would you say was like the first thing that you were like, oh yeah, I'm really attracted. Well, two things, like obviously the physical is the first thing you see. So his smile and um, his booty and a black pair of Dickies. Um, <laughs> and Dickies, that's a, that's a Puff Seals uniform, by the right. way. That's a Puff Seals uniform. Exactly. I could, I could wear some Dickies, boy. <laughs> hey, she, she's into men in uniform, huh? Right, exactly. Yeah. But um, I mean, other than that, too, like in his work, you could see his work ethic. Like, I mean, he treated the job at Papacitos with the work ethic mm -hmm. that he treats his career now. And so he was always hustling. He didn't half ass it. Like, you know, so that's that says something about your character as well. You know, it's um, like these days, most people are going to be growing up. Uh, I think probably at least 50 percent or more are growing up in a split household. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely a time where I mean, this is selfish of me to say, but I feel like men are definitely told how they're supposed to treat women. And women are taught how the women, men are supposed to treat them. But it feels like a lot of times, like, women aren't taught how they should treat their man or how that relationship should be on the other side because relationships are two-way streets. Mm -hmm. You know, where did, would you say that you learned how to be, like, respectful in the way that, that like, creates a good relationship? That's an interesting question, but it, because I would say part of my love language or like my primary love language in showing love is acts of service. And I definitely get that from my mom. Um, she's definitely that way. And in terms of how to um, respect and treat a man, I would say we've honestly had like, I mean, not, I don't want to say issues, but um, probably not as respectful as... I could and should be at all times. Um, and that's probably cause a little bit of friction, if you will, with us just because um, I love my father, rest in peace. Um, but he was a doormat for my mom first and then my my um, stepmother second. And so he was really a pushover. And so I, as a strong, even, you know, willed person as a teenager, um, you know, pushed him around. Um, and again, love my father, very good man, very loving in a lot of the ways actually mm -hmm. that Roland is um, doing lots of things for the women in his life. But um, that wasn't necessarily a good model for me and how to treat Roland. And so that's been something I'd say I've had to work on through the years. And I'm still not perfect, but I feel like a little bit better. And from time to time, he reminds me. <laughs> Let me ask you this, man, you know, because um, one thing that if anybody's ever met you knows, like, you are very strong-willed. You are not a pushover in any way. But I will say, I feel like you are very, in a lot of, very submissive, you know, with him. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in a way of, like, it takes a very strong woman to be able to, you know, and a very strong man for a woman to trust a man enough to say, hey, I'm willing to not have to like be so, you know, strong with you. You know, are you, I guess, you know, for you, like how have you helped to facilitate that? I think it's one of the, 
I would say the lessons of having a long-term relationship is uh, knowing when to lead and knowing when to follow. How do you differentiate, though? Because I'll tell you that. I, I definitely, I'm, mm-hmm. <laughs> you guys know me well enough. I'm pretty strong-willed. Yeah. How do you know when? I mean, we just, I don't know, just do it together. It's a team effort. Again, we're, we want to win, you know, and we want to win together big. So the more she wins, the more I win. You know, so it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't know how to say it other than it's a team effort, you know, like for her being right now, her career and her bodybuilding career, like me helping her win. I mean, I get, it's like me up there on the stage. It's, I get the same kind of reward, if not more. I get more emotional about it than she does, actually. I mean, because I'm just so freaking proud, right? I mean, it's so cool to see her do things like, I mean, we, we never would have thought that she could do, right? It's just so cool. But there's a, there's always someone's going to lead at some points and then follow the other points. But no one that when no one to do that. I don't know. I feel like we just innately do that. Yeah, I feel like it's a it's a little bit like intuitive. Just yeah. um, probably knowing how passionate maybe someone is about a particular thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so if you've got complete competing things on the calendar, knowing which one is the most yeah. important. Uh, I mean, I feel like too. Whenever you know, because I've trained a lot of women for competitions, and one thing I noticed is like if they started outgrowing their husband or boyfriend, they would almost resent them for competing. Mm -hmm. And you would see, you know, or like you see in your business, whenever obviously you are the master at building confidence in women, you, that's what you do and you love doing it. Mm -hmm. And so you see people who outgrow and that there's like a trust factor that's lost. Like, Oh my gosh, if you under, if you knew that you were better, you might leave me. But you guys both, in every aspect of your life, you continue to level up, but you never resent each other for it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if if there's something you could put into words about how to keep a level of trust as you're growing. I know you would grow together, but that's definitely a group effort. Y'all are both growing. Yeah. I I think one, uh, another like kind of life lesson I've kind of reflected onto this, um, you know, our relationship is we hold each other at a very high standard. How do you not feel pressured, though? Because people who do that sometimes, they almost feel, like, pressured by the other person. Because, like, Doc, you're a very high-level guy. Yeah. I mean, in every level. And then, Corey, you're obviously very beautiful. You're obviously very driven. Whatever you want to do, you're going to do. You know? But she, she knows that I kind of expect that from her, and then vice versa. So, for me, I'm constantly trying to – I mean, I was joking around on social media the other day. Just I'm always constantly trying to impress this woman. And she's so hard to impress not true it is a fact you <laughs> see he's seen it he's seen, seen it personally <laughs> but it's this innate thing like she just knows what kind of gets me going and what motivates the heck on me and it's really trying to impress her right it's either me trying to you know look like a greek god physically or you know be the best plastic surgeon in the country but it's always i'm just always trying to you know go up like to that one day i'm gonna get that wow that's really awesome that's what i want to get from her one day <laughs> <laughs> hey, what would you say of all the things he's ever done for you, with you, whether it's, you know, what would you say is the most impressive thing? If you had to <clears throat> take like one thing, the most impressive thing he's ever done. I mean, realistically, it would be the whole planning that you saw um, and the preparation, because I know it was a lot of time in the making um, to recreate our proposal the year before our 20 year wedding anniversary. So he proposed, um, you know, originally, and then a year to the date later, we got married on that date. And then, I mean, obviously he had to been thinking about it for a while to be able on our 19th, you know, wedding anniversary to come with a fresh proposal, you know, sort of remaking that um, without me knowing what was happening, you know, uh, sort of an elaborate plan and whatever. And I know you felt like I didn't seem very impressed in the moment, but really, yes, um, very thoughtful. And that's more than anything, probably what Roland is, is really thoughtful, um, with those kind of things, and I do appreciate the thought. Well, he was a guy who kind of helped me on that. That goes on that, that. Uh, that that secret uh, plan there, but we made it happen. You were so nervous, dude. I, I swear to God, it looked like you were proposing for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I found it really endearing. Honestly, it was a, for like to watch the way that you did that. It was. Um, it really it looked like somebody like a little boy that was literally produ- like they were going to be proposing for the first time. Yeah. You were so nervous, and you've been with her for twenty years. Yeah, and you you've known me a long time now. You haven't seen me nervous for really much anything. No, 
Um, I've seen you cut a bunch of people open, and you never look nervous once. No, I'm not going to flinch. But you know, it was it was a it was a special moment for me. You know, it really was. Let me ask you this: What made? I feel like a lot of guys see something like that and they're like, "Oh, that was a really good idea." Mm-hmm. Like, how would you say that you? Like, is there any way you could give somebody advice on like? You know, because men, we compartmentalize. And I think, obviously, like women, too. I just have never been a woman before. Um, We want to do the right thing. And sometimes we just get lost in life. And, you know, kids, work. How is it that you could give somebody some advice on, like, how to not forget the little things? Because the little things matter so much. The way that you planned that out was incredible. How could you give somebody advice on ways that they could make sure that they're always checking those those boxes without them feeling like check boxes? Man, there's so many things that go into that question. Um, man, it's just, um, you know, at that point, we've been together for, you know, what, 21 years, 20, 24 years at that point? A long time. You know, my relation to Corey is just obviously very unique. You know, that's why I wanted to kind of do this and kind of share some lessons of, uh, of a long-term relationship the, uh, I think the underlying foundation of our, the strength of our marriage is really the trust and communication. You know, obviously communication is a, you know, it's so cliche for, for couples to communicate. And, uh, you know, we're not perfect. You know, we have communication issues. Um, but in the end, we really try to make sure we get through those the issues and get it, get over it quickly. That's another lesson is don't hold grudges. You know, I'm going to get mad. She's going to get upset. Um, and we handle that kind of situation differently. Right. Um, but you got to let it go. Right. And you can't hold grudges. So that that to me has been something we continue to grow on and hopefully get better at. And, um, you know, hopefully this is what I really want. One day is like when I'm 80, I'll be able to say um, when people ask me about Corey, like, yeah, we've been been together since high school. When I'm 80. That'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, I definitely as long as obviously I'll live in that long. I mean, you definitely yeah. will be, you know, which is, I think is so, uh, it's very um, abnormal these days. It really is abnormal. Mm-hmm. And it obviously starts from a great foundation and then like keeping that foundation strong, right? For people like that, um, that are really wanting what you guys have. Cause I, th- I would, there's not m- many people I would say that would look at that kind of relationship and knowing how fruitful it is right and how fulfilling it is like the relationship you have is more fulfilling than 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 anything else Mm -hmm. how would you tell someone like Corey? how would you tell someone a a girl you know to pick a partner like if, if if you had to say like these three things what three things would you say really matters in picking a partner well i think what's i alluded to it or spoke to it earlier in that I could see in Roland's family how he was being raised in a really great environment. And, I mean, you really learn by that. And I think that's another way that, you know, Roland talks about through his foundation, honoring his father's legacy and him treating me just as well as his father treated his mother is another way that he honors his legacy. And it's also a way to simultaneously without our girls, even probably really realizing it, Mm -hmm. build that sort of expectation for their potential future mate as well to see that this is how my dad treated my mom. And so I need to find someone um, that's going to treat me that way. And I know you have some folks that work with you in the Mm -hmm. OR that Mm -hmm. say that, like, I hope my, daughter find someone that that loves her the way that you love Corey and I mean like what a what a great compliment I mean for both of us you know for for people to say that and so um, I don't know if I could distill it down to three things but I would say definitely be super observant of you know their family environment their family dynamic because those are learned behaviors over years and so it's tough to grow out of that Um, maybe I could ask you this because you know what you're saying is, hey, I saw how he did. I saw how he did. But let's be real, man. If if you would be, if you were doing all these things, and she was not in some way reciprocating or showing appreciation for those things, 
how long would you really keep doing it? I know I wouldn't. Yeah, I know yeah. that that would be it's over quick. Right, right. So, I agree with that. Yeah. like, how do you stay in a way where, like, you can continue? The behaviors that you want, you keep them coming. I mean, I think you really just genuinely, like, want to see that other person happy. You know, I mean, that's part of what love is. And so if you know or, you know, make their life easier in some way. So if you know that doing something makes them feel loved, um, doing something saves them five minutes in their day um, and they really need that five minutes, then do those things. And it's it just it feels good to do those things. I'll say a lesson for us is to one of our secrets to success and in, um, in our relationship is that we lift each other up. You know, when whenever you know I was having a hard time with like my residency and training stuff like that, you know, she's behind me. Like they're just, I knew I had someone with me at all times. I would just believe in me and what I was going to do. And then same thing with her. Like when she's you know deep in the prep and stressed and. You know, I just get it done. You know, she, I know she's going to be a little irritable. She's hangry. It's going to be okay. <laughs> I know why. I understand why. I, Cause I've been in private and I get it, but you know, I lift her up. Right. And you got to just help support. And that's kind of where the, the foundation relationship is just, you know, going find the leading following. Right. You know, I'm trying to support her and, and vice versa. You know, I think probably one of the, I want to talk about this because one of the hardest times we ever had together as a, as a couple was when we went to Denver. Yeah, yeah. for sure. By the way, Hardest Corey year. and her long answers we were talking about, that was one of the long answers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're going there. Yeah, that was that was definitely the hardest challenge for us as a couple, by far. A year, to be honest with you, I don't remember much of it. Um, that was my first year of residency training and the journal surgery. I was probably one of the most malignant programs in the country for surgery. You know, working 100 hours a week was expected. You know, there was no calling to go home. It was you, you were expected to work. And, you know, I did basically three years of residency within one year. Um, and to, to take Corey out of our home environment, our home community with a young baby and then work from home, like, you know, telecommuting from home by herself. Before that was like really a thing. <laughs> in, yeah. yeah. In a community, she knew no one. Like we knew nobody in Colorado in an environment we're not comfortable with. It was cold all the time. Like we're not used to cold. We didn't know what white stuff was. <laughs> Like, she was locked away. Basically, I would come home. I don't remember really coming home much. I, it was just, I was just walking zombie at all times. And, that is um, true. You know, at this, you know, I remember going, vaguely remember going out with the baby, with uh, Juliana at the time, and then with Corey and trying to maintain a relationship with her. And I, I can't tell you how many times I just sat there. I'm like, man, am I, am I making the right choice? What about you, Corey? Did you ever feel like, are you making the right choice? I didn't doubt that. I feel like um, because I knew from the get go that they were going to be, it was going to be tough. Um, and so it was more like just, I mean, like almost with like a bodybuilding prep. I mean, now I can say that I didn't think yeah. that at the time, but it's like, you just have to push through like, and know that there's a finish line. Um, and just really like, like we've talked about um, in prep, embrace the suck, yeah. you know, yeah, these so, days, everybody's so short, like short <clears throat> with their, their, their eyes are so short, right? It's like, what's the next thing in front? Yeah. Right. How did you keep your eyes on like, hey, this is going to be, you know, tough for a year at least. Right. How did you keep at it? At that time, it was potentially five years. Oh, man. And it was so bittersweet when we found out we oh were coming back since we had just purchased a townhome in Denver oh. that was really like, ex you know, extending ourselves. Um, but I was glad to be coming back home to where family was and to be able to, you know, get back into my job, like in an office because like I needed that socialization. Um, but yeah, that was a hard year and he was sleeping or working basically the entire time. And I'm admittedly not like a real like baby baby person um like I never babysat kids growing up Roland taught me how to diaper Juliana when she was born like I didn't know how to diaper a baby I believe uh, all of this yes way. oh for sure for <laughs> sure and so um that that was probably the harder part of it was like I felt like I mean I was not raising her alone but there were a lot of times when you were essentially raising right her when she you know was just me and her and it was like man I could really use like a little bit of relief but like there really wasn't any um 
So we, we couldn't afford to yeah. have babysitters. Like. Right. And then when we came back, I think I alluded to this in, you know, when we were going on the questions too, we were buried in debt because we couldn't offload that townhome because the market crashed. And then we came here and we bought a house. Um, so we over, we, we put ourselves in that position to overextend ourselves. But that year after we came back was better in that we were, were surrounded by family. family. But mm -hmm. then we, you know, now I understand how it, it builds, you know, because we were like, late on a payment and then you have the interest and it's like that was a struggle and a different type of struggle um for us that year following a financial struggle so which must yeah. have taught y'all less because like one thing that i know about you right whatever it is that you have like you know whatever kinds of like physical things you have that money buys like you could have bought five times ten times if you had it right and so you've obviously become like really good with budgeting money and and really dealing with money in fact, you're one of the people I would look up to or call for advice when it comes to money. You know, um, do you feel like that had a huge like, role to play in, in that? Um, yeah. I mean, I think we've been fairly good with our money. I think so many times during college, we're like beans and rice, man, and ramen. And like we, we were, we were, she was there with the, from the beginning. Like we were poor. <laughs> like we tell our daughters all the time, like we were freaking poor. But we got by and we were happy. We were together and we knew, again, we saw, the, I, you know, she was, she's believed in me from like day one. Like she was a very, very, very handful of people I told them to be a plastic surgeon one day, just a handful. And uh, she, she believed in the dream and the dream, you know, the idea was to get me to that point where I could, we could get to the dream and then, and then she would get a return on investment. But two things about that, like, yes, that's true. But at the same time, I told him, even if he hadn't been a plastic surgeon, like, I still would have loved him the same. Like, that really wasn't that big of a deal to me. Like, yeah, it's great. Like, no, I reap the benefits of it now. But um, that wasn't, like, something I was looking for, talking about, like, what yeah, you're looking for in a mate. I, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've, somebody's, like, you know, talking about you guys because, you know, y'all are on stage at Olympia, and obviously she, you look incredible. You know, and they're like, people think you're a trophy wife. And I'm like, well, yes and no. They've been together since they were in high school and y'all built into this, right? Whereas you do, like, what's what's cool and, you know, I think it's great is that you look like the kind of wife that, you know, like he became successful and now here's this beautiful woman mm -hmm. with all this, you know, blue eyes and all this incredible stuff and, but no, like y'all have grown up with this. You're with him when he was poor. And definitely one thing I know about you, and I've talked to you about it before multiple times, is um, Corey's like super low maintenance. Oh my God, thank God. <laughs> like you're definitely the more high Man, maintenance. And y'all have no idea. I am definitely more I was gonna high say, you're talking about money. Like yeah. it's me that like kind of keeps it like yeah. I'm reasonable. The, I'm the girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, hey, hey, for the audience out there, because I know the answer to this, but I think other people need to know. Every Olympia outfit that she's ever had, how did she get that outfit? Picked it. Right, this guy got it for me. Yeah, for sure. I mean, who dresses her? I do. Right. <laughs> it's so true. Like, I, yeah. I photo shoots. I mean, photo shoots. There's nothing, there's nothing that goes on her body without my, at least my selection right. or heavy input. Yeah. But I think what's so funny true. about that is because, like, a lot of times, like, people hear something like that and they're like, oh, wow, he must be controlling. But, Really, it's because you have a great style and you just yes. appreciate his style, right? right? It's not like you're going to wear this, you yeah. know? And yeah. I, I, into that, I got a question for you because I mm -hmm. think this is something that I feel like is really, it's kind of convoluted. These days, a lot of times I feel like whenever like men set boundaries, people call them controlling, mm -hmm. right? If they set a boundary, like, hey, this is, if you do this, this would be a problem, right? It's now considered controlling. How do y'all go about like setting boundaries and still feeling respected? I mean, I, I guess I could see some people interpreting like, you know, me you know, like dressing her as, as uh, being controlling. I don't really present it as controlling. I just think she looks great in certain things. I mean, if she says no, then we don't wear it, you know, but it's not very often. I know what she looks good in. It's true. Yeah, I don't. And I and, would never feel that way, actually. But even on like, other, like boundaries that people set, you know, um, you know, for instance, like, I know for me personally, if I'm with a woman, you know, and that's like my, my person, right? You're exclusively with someone. I don't think that they should necessarily be going to bars with a bunch of single friends. And not because I, I worry that person would cheat or something like that, but because I think it's unsafe. Mm -hmm. And for me as a, as a man, I definitely feel like my role 
is to keep you out of harm's way, just like a bodyguard would. Right. right? If a bodyguard said, hey, we're not going down that dark alley, he's not being controlling, he's mm-hmm. doing his job. So, you know, but these days, if, if someone were to say, hey, I don't think it's a good idea that you go to bars with your single friends because of the environment that creates and you put yourself in a bad position, that's considered controlling. Mm-hmm. What would you... What would you all say as far as like how to sell, set healthy boundaries and respect healthy boundaries? That's kind of a hard question to answer. I mean, I'm trying to answer that. I would say the biggest area where we've had struggles with boundary setting is actually with our daughters and that we've even yeah. come to that more recently. So it's less about our relationship, um, which we've never talked about it. It just feels like... Um, like there's just natural, natural, now. exactly, exactly. And I think if one of us was uncomfortable with something that someone did, it would probably be more like, okay, well, we haven't encountered this situation before. Like, I don't really love that you did that, and we'd be like, okay, well, then fine. Like, it it won't happen again, kind of thing, you know. So, um, and that's actually where we've been with the girls recently too. Is like, you know, Juliana's a senior in high school, and um, you know, again, we have different upbringings uh, and so um different maybe a little bit not really styles of parenting but just you know i um am probably a little bit more liberal and he's a little bit stricter and i think that's to be expected from a father as well of daughters and so um you know we've had more discussions lately about what it what it should be you know and and the responsibility that we need to come to an agreement together in terms of setting boundaries for them and a lot of it is just first you know it's like okay Juliana drives outside the beltway and so Roland gets really upset and I'm like well wait step back like we never told her she couldn't drive outside the beltway because we didn't really contemplate it you know going 90 miles an hour (laughs) It, it was a little excessive, yes. But um, at the same time, I feel like you can't necessarily, like the speeding, yes, she should know better. But driving that far, we never talked about it. So like, you, I feel like you can't really punish someone if you didn't tell them that they're breaking a rule that they didn't even know was a rule. You know what I mean? So some of that's been some of our, um, yeah, sort yeah, of friction. I guess communicating lately. what the boundaries are and just establishing where the boundaries are. Right. Yeah. Like what is not okay, right? Like, I know it's not, I already kind of innately know it's not okay in Corey's eyes, right? For for what I do as a living, right? Exactly. Let's, let's, let's talk about what I do for a living. I see naked women all day. That's all I do. That's what I do. Um, and I think there's a lot of women out there that would be very, very insecure about that and not okay with it. But, I don't um, give but, up. <laughs> but I think there's also a lot of men out there that would take advantage of that. One right. thing I've noticed about you is the level of separation that you have between patients and clients. You have a very healthy separation. Mm -hmm. Your staff does the majority of the talking. You care about your patients. Mm -hmm. You do. But you all, I've noticed you always put yourself in a position where that's never going to be a problem. You know, there's never going to be something that's inappropriately sent, even on accident, right? Because things can sometimes be left to interpretation. Right. I've noticed you, I've noticed really um, since day one, how well you structure that to where that's not a, gonna uh, that, that's not even gonna happen. I don't see a lot of comments I've heard from my staff about you know how patients look at me and stuff like that. I've, I, I have, I've seen and heard I, them. I've com- I am completely blind to it. I I just don't I don't I don't see it. There's I just see her. I don't, it's not that she's like I feel like this looming person over my shoulder or anything like that. I just don't see anybody else like that. I don't know how to describe that. And like, I would say the same is true for me. Like, I just, yeah, it just doesn't, to me, it just does, it's just not part of my mindset. You know, my job is to help people, right? I, that's my patient. I'm here to take care of you. And I'm going to treat you like my wife and taking care of you. That's it. But there's, I'm going to treat you like a patient, right? Not like how I treat her. Does that make yeah. sense? No, it makes sense. See, like, I so, see it. But with but the I, respect and care that he correct, would treat. The respect know, and me. care. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything I can to make sure we're going to get you this. And I know that about him. So it's, I'm not ever jealous of the fact that he's doing that. And I don't sit around thinking about it either. I mean, I guess if I wanted to sit around and think about it, then it might, you know, bother me in some kind of way. But, um, I know that it's all professional and honestly, like, um, (laughs) it's going to sound conceited, but I feel like we both feel like there's no one that the other could find that's better for them than, than we are. Right. So it's like, I don't think that he's going to go find someone that's more you, perfect for him than me. So it's like, good luck, buddy. Like, you know, <laughs> but how, how do you, how do you get there and stay there? Cause I'll say like for, for me and I guarantee you, 
like if you're watching this right now, most likely you have been in this situation. I'm a good looking guy. I've always been around like good looking women. And, you know, with like what we used to do, where, you know, interviewing people all the time, mm -hmm. right? And setting up shoots and things like that. I was never inappropriate. I was, I never did anything wrong. And I would still have girls that if I was dating them, mm -hmm. they would get jealous or they would like, and I, I would try to do the best I could to reassure them like, mm -hmm. hey, this is this way. How do you either, how do you, how do, is there something that like you could say that he does really well that's always just reassured you? I know it's kind of difficult because y'all have had such a really, to answer because y'all have had such a good foundation that's continued to have this trust built up to where you, you, it's not going to be like one rock thrown and it shatters. But is there anything you could say that he has done throughout the years or he does currently that makes you to where you don't even have that seed grow? Quite, yes, and and it's because he does see female bodies all day. And so he, like, from a young age, he didn't realize, like, and I think that's, like, this is very personal, but he's, like, like, you basically, like, all the attributes under the covers, you know, that people don't see. I mean, they see a lot of them in the photography, but not, like, not every last one. Um, <laughs> he's, like, well, you're, yeah, 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 you got it going on, You're right? both perfect. <laughs> so that makes me feel better, too. Like, because, I mean, again, as a woman, like, you, I, I don't spend time looking at other women to know that, like, ooh, I have perfect, like, X, Y, Z. And, oh, there's some really not good X, Y, Z's out there. You know, like, I don't know that. So it's reassuring That's to hear true. from, it's reassuring to hear <laughs> from. some bad ones out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's reassuring to hear from him that, like, yeah, look, looks good. <laughs> um, what would you say? Okay, so for you, if you were giving advice, not even so much about your relationship, if you were giving advice to a, a guy out there on how, to, especially, you know, like, you know, people who travel or in any way, what would be some ways that you could say, hey, this is how you could really reassure your person that you want to feel reassured. How could you, like, what would be some things that you would tell them to do? Let's say listen to them more the best you can as a man. You know, we're not very good at listening. I mean, I think, you know. And we're not mind readers. Just, hey, ladies out there, we are not mind readers. Not. Like, 75% of the stuff that you tell us, we probably don't listen to. 25% we do. <laughs> And even then, it's really hard for us to fully understand. Even if we're trying to understand. Even if we're trying, you're right. You're totally true. It's totally true. So it's just a genetic flaw. But um, really do the best you can to listen to them and, and spend more time with them and really try to gain their trust. Once you have that trust, it's just constantly just nurturing the trust, right? So I know for a fact, like, I can leave Corey in a room full of, like, male models and maybe even next Tom Brady, I don't know, maybe even JT, maybe JT. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have to worry about her, right? It's maybe, true. maybe JT. <laughs> but, you know, I think she could feel the same way about me. Like, I, you know, look at what I do for a living. I'm about to say, like, she literally does have to yeah. do that all the and time. She's, she knows, right? Like, well, and if I can jump in here, one thing that I can say uh, that has felt good when he's traveling um, without me um, is like, you know, he'll send like a, a, like a, just a little text message. It was like, Oh, I miss you. Or, you know, can't wait to be home, um, and, and see you, you know? And so it's little things like that, that took what, like 20 seconds for you to send a text message like that. Um, that, that make you feel good and be like, Oh, he's away from home, but he's still thinking of me. I got another one for you guys. So this is something that I think I, I definitely struggle with. For the most part, most men, they prefer respect over love, you know, and that's a huge thing for a man to feel respected. And so for a lot of women, if you want your man to be this high level man, you have to be able to treat him like he is that and you have to make him feel like he is that. Mm -hmm. And from my experience, I've noticed a lot of women that I've dated that whenever, you know, like I am successful they almost like makes them feel insecure and they almost want to bring it down. They almost like resent you for that. Mm -hmm. How do you go about, you know, I know we've talked about supporting each other's goals, but in a way of like always helping him to feel the way he needs to feel to be able to continue. Cause the woman in your life is going to be instrumental in your success or your failure. And if they bring you down, if they beat you down, if they constantly nag you, like you're, if you don't come home to a peaceful household, it's going to be hard to have a good life. How would you say that you, you know, you could, you go about continuing to build him up that way? I mean, it's just a matter of always, 
I feel like encouraging him and, if, you know, I mean, as simple as like just not not giving him grief if he's got dinner, business dinners out three nights that week, like, okay, like go do what you need to do and I'll take care of whatever needs to be taken care of at home. Um, and if he's, it's going to be a late night, okay, like fine. Like it, you know, like I'm not worried that he's going to be home later than maybe our normal bedtime, which is really early. Um, <laughs> you know, like that's fine. Like I feel like you got to do what you got to do. And, and Roland said it earlier, like, you know, either one of our success is our shared success. And so, and same thing with our happiness, you know, if I'm happy, like we're collectively happy. If he's happy, like we're happy, like it's, you know, that's what it is. I mean, let me ask you this, you know, talk about like long relationships, making them work. Y'all have had this foundation that you've been able to build. So like for y'all to handle a problem today versus somebody who, you know, like for me, I'm 36. The next person I meet, they're going to have some history and you're going to have to build through that. You know, and I've asked you definitely for advice with, with women and you've given me some really good advice on things, which, you know, it's, it's so hard, especially to date in this time. Yeah. Uh, you know, where your, your girl has, people have access to her on social media all the time, mm -hmm. all the time. And you know, if you just like, maybe there's just like a couple of days where you've been busy and they just feel unloved for a minute and then think there's some attention coming in. That's one thing that I definitely have always, I've been, you know, I fight now is, that if you know women can get attention so easily and they and and i look at that like do you seek attention online you know I mean, social media is just rampant for it it's just a constant demand for validation and you know posting pictures and like only fans is a comp is a great example of it oh my gosh um i would never date an only fans chick just so all of y'all know never <laughs> if you have it only fans i will never date you <laughs> in fact i won't even go on a date with you you know, I don't, you know, there's, there's different facets. There's different, I guess, types of couples that are very successful long-term wise. I think, you know, we get, we get called power couple all the time. And I think the, the power aspect of being a power couple is you have two very high functioning individuals that are very ambitious, right? That hold themselves a very high standard. They're very successful independently. It's not, not just a one, it's not one-sided, right? I, I, I know I'd be successful by myself, but with her, man, I, I am freaking unstoppable. There's no doubt about it. Um, and same thing with her. Like, she's an alpha. Like, was she always an alpha? No. When I first met, I wouldn't say she was an alpha personality. But it was an alpha. I, saw, I recognized it. I saw it. And I wasn't as confident as I am now. I, I mean, I was a Hispanic kid. Grew up in a white community. I was told that you're not going to you're not gonna be a doctor. There's no way. I never had a doctor in that community before. And I was Hispanic. Like, to me, I always felt I had this chip on my shoulder to never going to be, like, I wasn't expecting much of me, right? First doctor in my entire family, right? I was the first one to say, I'm going to be a doctor, right? Had all, I mean, there's all this insecurity of not being able to do it, right? And so I wasn't alpha. I knew I wanted to do it, and I believed in the dream. I knew I could do it just out of putting the time and the effort. And then when I found her, and I saw that she was, she was such a nurturer, and she, she didn't, like, really look at me funny when I told her I was going to be a plastic surgeon one day. And, um, and that just, that gave me a little bit of confidence. And then that confidence built, right? And then, you know, she wanted to be a broadcast journalism and she wanted to be on two. I was like, that'd be freaking awesome. You're gorgeous. Like, <laughs> look at your eyes. Have you seen your eyes? Like, you would be awesome, man. And so this is how it just kept going, right? So we've, we've nurtured each other through our relationship, you know, building each other, lifting each other up, back and forth, back and forth. And now she's this incredibly successful, independent woman in herself. Like, she does not need me. Let's be clear about that. She does not need me to be very successful what she does. But she's, that's why she's a power woman, alpha woman. Like, she is strong by herself. But with me, and then look what she does. I mean, she's fourth in the world in the Masters Olympia. I mean, I, mean, I don't, you know, it's funny that you say all this stuff because at this point, like now not having a full-time career, I don't really feel worthy of the power couple. Like I'm like, what part of the power like am I? Cause I don't have this. And, and, and I suppose that's one traditional way to define 
power is having, you know, like a really driving, uh, successful career. But I, it, I have a little bit of imposter syndrome now when people talk about us being like well, a power but, couple but because you, I don't feel. But you put in your time. Like, I mean, do you I remember <laughs> you were going, you were getting an MBA? Yes. Full time career. Yes. <laughs> at a Fortune 500 company. Yes. You had a whole team you're managing and you have two daughters. And you're competing for your pro card. I know, it was and, ridiculous. And who got your pro card that year? Uh, well, no, it wasn't that year, so, but that's nice. <laughs> it's nice that you say that. But still, yes, we were juggling all the balls together. Um, so but you're, yeah. you're doing things that most women cannot do. I guess, and I don't know. That, no. that in itself is just something, I, you know, that's just, that, that takes a special person. And, no. you know, I think you have two personalities that, you know, they have those independent qualities and they're together. That's where you kind of get this power couple concept. And, um been very fortunate enough that you know she's you know been my ride or die and look what we're doing together and we're hopefully we're inspiring people to to have relationships that are strong but it's built on foundations of trust and communication and supporting each other lifting each other up you know it's leading and following at the same time it's it's so and it's going to change throughout our lives it really is like it's yeah. we're in our kind of our, i would say we're coming up into our last phase of our relationship as a couple Right. So the first phase is when you're dating and it's really just me and her. All, she's all my attention. Right. Yeah. And then the, you get a dog. You, get, you play around thinking you're having a kid. You get a dog. <laughs> and the next thing you do is you get married and you have kids. And then you have another relationship where you have kids. And that relationship with the, as a couple is totally different. Yeah. Completely different. And that evolves as they get older. And then now we're transitioning to the point where we have two young adults right in the house and trying to interact with with children who think they're adults, not really trying to establish these boundaries and respect and, you know, me, how I interact with Corey. And hopefully I'm just, I'm just hoping God that I've raised them well and they, they see how I treat Corey, like what they should expect out of a man. Yeah. Like the level of respect I have for Corey and how I treat her and support her and everything she does. I hope my daughters can say, you know, that their, their standard is going to be so freaking high. I don't know if that's be a bad thing, but I, I they deserve it. No, I think it's a wonderful thing. They absolutely deserve the best, man, and that and that's that's me as a dad. That's my my job is to hopefully set that bar. Um, with two parents that have been together for a long time, um, that hopefully they can have that same kind of relationship with their future partner. Um, that that means a lot. You know, that meant a lot when we just renewed our vows. Like our, it was just us and our daughters. That's it. That's all I needed. And hopefully we get to, we set that, set that image permanently in their brain, right? So when they get to do it, that it means something, right? That's right. So important. Can I give you a perspective from, of mine? Cause something you said just really like, definitely, um, like hit me differently is that when you said, yeah, I don't, I feel almost imposter syndrome because I don't have this job. I'm going to tell you something about. A real man. A real man never cared what you did for a living at all. One thing about good men is you could work at Waterbury, but if you're a good woman, they don't care because we plan on carrying the load anyway. But I think what makes you a power couple, and actually what makes you a good woman in my eyes, is the fact that you can be confident enough in yourself to not have to have this, I'm an independent woman type of mentality. I have this career. I have this. Or you can be a great mother. You can be a great wife. But you are, you do pursue something every day and you do have a different, you do have a job still. It's just like, you, 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 <laughs> yeah. but I think you are living the life that people should live. What do you do every day? What you wanted to do? You've, you've literally, y'all took 20 years to create this life that you now get to live. Right. If, if you made $20 million a year, every single year, no matter what you did all day, you wouldn't sit at home. You'd probably still do plastic surgery every day. Absolutely. There you go. If you could just do it for free all day, you would do it for free all day. Yes, please. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so like for yeah. you, you know, he like he lives his dream every day. We've talked about this all the time. But like for you, I think it's really actually what makes you a power couple is that there is no power dynamic of like, oh, I have to have this job and this and that because these days, uh, and this is something that I, I hear all the time now, like, you know, girls that want to go on a date with me or something like that. And they're like, yeah, I'm an independent chick. I'm like, cool. Then don't ask me for a relationship because I don't care what they do. I make great money. I don't care what they do for a living. It literally matters none to me. Would you be a good woman to me? You know? And I think on this, on the, but I think on the flip side, 
You have to be the kind of man that you know isn't going to, like, you know, you quit your job or you don't have it. And now he's like, all right, I make the money, I make the decisions, and they pull, like, hold that over right. your head. Yeah, he's not like that, thankfully. <laughs> exactly. But yeah. that's what I mean. That's what makes you a power couple is that you're not worried about him taking advantage of a situation, and right. you're not worried about her taking advantage of a situation. That's, I think, what makes a power couple. And so it's like when you say say that, like, well, I feel like it's most imposter. No, it's the exact opposite, at least the way that I see it. It's the, yeah. that strength. That's a, you know, that's a fascinating now thing. You know, she's not an imposter. I totally agree. But her value to me now. Yeah, I think number four in the world in Masters <laughs> Olympia. Her, her, her really, like, her biggest contribution to me and my ambitions and my dreams and everything like that is, is really her belief in me. Like, you know, I can't tell you how, how like, so powerful it is to have, when you have a woman that actually believes in her man man just watch him do some cool stuff right yeah. if they have it in them like the man to really do some cool stuff just watch what they can do and so and it makes me proud it makes me proud to support her you know that's that's an innate thing about being a man is to protect and provide and so the more i can protect to provide the bigger i feel the more unstoppable i feel and it just keeps i just feel like i'm this just incredible hulk at times in what i'm trying to do because you know, I tell her some of these stupid dreams I have, like what I want to do. They're not stupid. And the other thing I'll say, <laughs> okay, too. Okay, there you go. They're <laughs> not stupid. Well, they are not stupid. You don't say that. <laughs> well, what's, what's great about us, too, um, you know, when you stop to sort of think about what works well or how you balance each other, I would say, Roland likes to say he's a realist, but I would call him a pessimist. Um, and I am an eternal optimist. So it's, and that's. Probably partly, too, where we, like, you know, sort of there's friction in parenting, too. Because I'm like, oh, it'll be fine. Like, nothing bad's oh going to happen. Like, you know. So that's the optimist in me. And so I think if he says he's going to do something, then I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, you're going to do it. Like, because yeah. I don't see okay, but the, all, like, negativity or the potential downside. Okay. I'm like, yeah, we're going to do it. Like, I <laughs> But when he says he's going to do something. True. He does it. Right. Like, yeah, yeah it's, I don't care if it was, like, when you first started, when I first met you years and years ago and you were already talking about this foundation that you want to start i'm like all right cool you know because i hear people talk all the time like yeah cool man right on good maybe one day and then like the next year you're a little closer a little closer a little closer and then all of a sudden here you are you have a golf tournament you raise what like thirty thousand dollars thirty five thousand dollars and you put this all together you set it off obviously you had help from people and things like that but the whole point is, like you said, like, it's almost scary when he tells you, yeah, this is what I want to do. It's almost scary because you're like, oh, well, he's going to die or do it. One of the two <laughs> is going to happen. I, I'm very selective of what kind of things I tell her because I have all these ideas in my head, right? And it's, this is one of my problems. Is I, I, once I get an idea in my head, it keeps me up at night. I have trouble sleeping. Um, but the ones I do tell her, I want it before I, when I tell her what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that's going to happen. It's really important. You know, because she once I have her belief in me and I'm going to do these things, man, just watch out. So what we have coming in the next 10 years is you think I've done some stuff. Just wait until we get done with what we're doing. So really excited. Um, there's so much more life to, to live. Look so forward to it and hopefully inspire others, you know, not just in relationships, but really in just, you know, helping humanity and giving back, you know, paying it forward, you know, all these aspects of um, of my life that. We, we really feel together that we can contribute to society. How should a couple that wants to have a good relationship, how should they handle conflict? Because I think both of you should answer it separately because for the way a man receives or handles conflict, either coming in or outward, it's completely different than the way a woman does. So whoever wants to start, like how do you think a woman should internalize and then also handle conflict? I'm more of the type that wants to just like address it and deal with it right away. Um, and definitely when there's conflict, that's when I would say I'm most emotional um, and not really in a good way. Um, <laughs> that's normal, by the way, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Roland is more, as you know, a, sort of a, a thinker, like he'll go and, and, consider and then once so doesn't want to necessarily address it right away and so um that's been something i feel like we've worked on through the years to be better at that and so um we might get in a few words initially and then we'll circle back to it later um to really like 
make sure that each of us is able to say what they want to say after he's had time to think about it. Um, and it's probably better for me too to have the time to think about it as well, um, realistically. But I'm definitely more of that like rapid fire um, if you were to leave me to my own devices. Um, and I'm the opposite. I, I want to think about it and I don't want to say anything I regret. That's like what my big, big fear. So maybe that's a man thing. I don't know. But I agree with that. I, we men, we tend to kind of internalize things for a little bit. And um, I don't, I don't want to say anything I regret. You know, words aren't physical, you know, abuse. They but um, And you don't forget them. I know as a man, man, when a woman says something yeah. to you that it is hurtful or yeah. belittling, oh, like man. you do not forget it. Never forget and it. And you try to. Oh, my gosh. Like, man, there they, there's cer certain words that could be said to me, like, just break me. But and, and you, and you can't forget them. Like it's never. Weird. I don't see you can you can let go. So I really, for her sake, really, and for my sake, is really. I you know I love her so much. I don't want to say anything I regret. So I need to kind of step back and just like, just calm down. You know, just calm down a little bit. So we come back to it, and I feel like a more rational I've thought about it, and uh, I think we're able to kind of. We've always been able to get through things. So and that comes back to one of the lessons is don't hold grudges. Um, don't keep scorecards. There's no yeah. scorecard. Just you got it. You got it. It's a, it's a long game, you know, and um, you know, marriage isn't perfect, but there are some situations you have to get through, and hopefully, you can get through them successfully and come out the better for it. You've known me long enough to know, like, I mean, I could definitely have a temper, yeah. and I know that about myself. So I have to shut down. I have a cap. Like once I feel this, mm -hmm. I shut down. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking to you. But I think it also says a lot about you that you will stifle that emotional feeling of no talk right now, no talk right now. Gotten and, better at it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just realized that comes a lot of, with one of our daughters. Like, she cannot take me, like, not talking. Yeah. I, she hasn't realized that yet. Like, that's how I react. Like, I don't want to say anything that's hurtful, right? Right. Because my compensation is would not be a good one because I feel like I'm her parent, right? I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to be your parent. There's a reason I'm telling you not to do things <laughs> for your safety. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole nother discussion with parenting. Like that's, there's, that's the really hard part for us is like, we've never done this before. Like, there's no freaking rule book to parenting. Like we have two daughters. Like and they're I mean, both it different. Is, oh, they're complete. Yeah, they're raised different. exactly the same, the same environment, the same parents. I, I, it's so hard. Like this is the hardest job ever. And yeah. You know, thank God I have her. You know, she's she Same. without her as my kind of my yang. You know, I think um, you know we'd have a hard time parenting. You know, kids like you know that we we think I think we're doing a pretty good job. Good you are doing such a good job. You know, both of y'all's girls thank are you. so great. I've been able to be around them now for and since you know even though it's you know even you think about it's a short span of time they were little girls when I first yeah. met them. You yeah. know, and those now are the best like ages. Yeah, young adults. Yeah, I've gotten to see them through like mm -hmm. a very large transition in a short period of time mm -hmm. and y'all y'all do such a great job you know i um this part has you know obviously maybe a little bit to do more to do with with you you know whenever i talk about you to my friends and i always say like if there was somebody that i could really look up to to be like just half as good at and and i don't mean just like financially or any other way like the way you are as a dad the way you are as a husband like i really tr would like model myself a lot about how you are um the way that you treat her, the way you talk about her, the way you are at your career, the way you are with your employees. I like, I don't know how you have the, like that kind of mental energy in you for the day, you know, to do that. Um, but I really admire of all the people I know, and I know a lot of great people, incredible people, but of all the people I know, if I had to model myself after a certain person, I would really model myself after you, not, you know, like in all aspects, you you balance things so well. And I know that in your answer, you know, we asked you some questions. You had said, there's a lot of times where you're not balancing things. You're just really doing your best to manage them. But I think that is the balance is that balancing isn't just like, we got it perfect and we keep it here. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's getting a little heavy on this side. Yeah. And then you, you got to yes. kind of weigh it in, but you're constantly always just walking this tight rope, but never losing sight of the end goal, just always constantly making adjustments. Yeah. And I just think that's like an unreal admirable quality that you guys both possess with each other that I don't know if it is teachable. I really don't. Yeah, I don't know if it's so teachable. I, I, 
you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that I thought this podcast would be a good time, but you just kind of get people insight into our relationship and uh, maybe what works for us. Um, I don't know. I just, um, I know we're unique. I feel like we're very, very unique. I see it within society. Very proud, you know, obviously. And I don't want to ever let it go. So everything I'm doing on a daily basis is, you know, we're trying to, we try to build, our, I've really tried to take a lot of time to focus on our relationship. You know, one of the secrets of, of our, I think our long-term relationship is we're, we spend a lot of time together alone. You know, I really make a focus on, we go to date nights, and, you know, probably more when frequently, we're not in prep. More frequently <laughs> than most people would, right? Um, you know, we just went on a vacation together. Like, we do that every year together. Like, I enjoy being with her. Like yeah, You celebrate your wife. I don't, yeah, I I don't want to be with a bunch of group of people. I'd rather just be with her. Me and her working out for two hours on a resort and then hanging out on a hammock all day. Dude, that is freaking awesome. But she's my friend. She's my best friend. So to me, it's just like, I don't know how to describe it. Like, to have someone who's your best friend that you, you care more about your, for her, I care more about for her than myself in many, many ways. But knowing that she's helped me do what I do even better, what I could ever imagined. And I, that's just such a powerful combination of factors that I don't know if that's, you can teach that or you can grow into it. I have no idea. But hopefully, you know, people watching this can kind of get maybe some inspiration and maybe some keys to success for having a long-term relationship. Because there's many, some really admirable couples out there, like the Labradas. The Labradas, to me, are like, how you look at me, that's how I look like Mr. Labrada. Like, the Labradas are incredible human beings, um, just leaders and inspiring. They have amazing kids. They right. look at the things they've done. Very family-oriented. Very family-oriented. Man, those guys are just amazing. We live in a society right now that tells, like, you know, women to be independent. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, wait till you're 40 to have kids. And then you get to 40, and it's really tough to have kids at 40. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and, you know, choose your career over family. If things aren't going well, find somebody new. Like, it's a very toxic culture against men right now. It's a very toxic culture against men mm -hmm. and against the family dynamic. Well, I think I, I wouldn't... I don't know if I agree with like, and I'm not a man, but I don't know if I would agree with it we being you like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, sort of a, like, you know, an attack on men or like, um, but I, I just feel like it's very, like, it's a very self-centered culture. So it's all about satisfying mm -hmm. me and myself. And if something gets a little bit uncomfortable, then I'm not doing it anymore because it's uncomfortable. Well, you know what? Relationships can, can be uncomfortable sometimes, but like, what's your, um, you know, what, what, do, what do you really want to have? Do you want to have that partnership at the end of the day? Well, then, yeah, you got to stick it out through the little bit of uncomfortable to get back to a place that feels really great, you know? Um, and so I think that's just another thing too, is that people are too quick to quit on things when um, they're a little bit hard or not as perfect as maybe they were in the beginning, or there's no more lust left after yeah. like that first little bit of your relationship, yeah. you know, newness wears off kind of thing. Here's a good point, Lance, and this could be a whole different podcast in itself in that, um, you know, the culture and society has changed how men and women are in the workforce is completely different now. Now there's just now you want a strong, independent women. And we are raising two girls that, that see Corey very strong, independent, like she doesn't need a man, right? Get your own education. And I don't know if that's a bad thing in, in, the, in the long run. Like they become, you know, I've seen some of my colleagues in plastic surgery that are these female surgeons that are just these type of alpha females, super strong, confident, and they can't get, they can't find a guy because they're 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 their press line is too strong and they're the dominant one. Can I you know, say but something it's, along it's the a, line that is? I think I don't. I don't. Well, let me give me one second. Yeah, I right. don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, and I, I don't know if I'm, like I'm setting the bar too high for my daughters. Like what the man should be as far as you know at the level they need to be. Will they wait too long? Will it, will they pass them up? Like will they can get into the late thirties or maybe not have kids because they're still waiting for someone that look like me? I don't know if that, I'm, I'm just good or bad thing. Man, I'm just hopeful. Like I think finding I found her so young. We had her kids young. You know, we did that on purpose, right? Yeah. I, I we talked about that when we first met. Is like let's have her kids young. They won't remember any of this. <laughs> you know. And I'm like, we won't know, either. <laughs> when I'm working 100 hours, 80 hours a week, they will remember the hard days, right? And we'll have family around us to raise our daughters and help us with that. But, you know, they got to, once they got to, there are things they can remember the times now. Like I was there. I helped, took them to school. I picked them up from school. I was there at all their events, made a big part of my life to make sure they're part, I was part of their events. And so 
that that was very important to have kids young. I don't know if that's going to be, cons- I don't know if it's still happening. I think the people oh, are getting, accident. yeah, it's happening either by accident or later in life in the thirties. And that's, I don't think that's a healthy thing. All right. There you heard it. I think I hope we gave you some tips to success and having a long-term relationship from my, my significant other and I, our power couple here. Um, thank you, Lance, for, for hosting this and helping me uh, make this happen. But hope we gave some insights into our relationship and uh, maybe inspire um, future relationships and what to look for in a relationship. Um, but you know, stay tuned for the upcoming podcast. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, and what you want to hear in future podcasts. So thanks again for following the Pit Dog Productions podcast. Stay tuned until next time.